Hey guys, welcome back to Super Dungeon Maker. Today I'm going to be playing through level 3, well, the uh, replica of level 3, the Manji from the original Legend of Zelda, while also giving my personal ranking of the of all of the Legend of Zelda games, not including the Tingle games <laughs> or the CDI games. I think that's all. Um, even though Zelda's Adventure is obviously the best game of all time. Okay, let me find my thing. I th it definitely looks like there's some new- I don't remember seeing this dark palace up here before. Um, you know, after I do the original Legend of Zelda dungeons, uh, maybe I can do another game. I'd like to do Ocarina of Time because I really like the conversion of like the 3D dungeons to a 2D form. To me that's cooler than like going 2D to 3D. But maybe after that we can do a Link to the Past or something else. Uh, I know there's a lot of Link's Awakening ones. Uh, let's see. It does- there's- there's the Manji dungeon. I don't remember if there was a Jabu Jabu's belly before, but that looks really cool. I really want to do that. I think I've done Deku Tree. Um, and Nodongo's Cavern, those were really neat. Those are right here. But yeah, there's some other replicas. There's apparently two Tears of the Kingdom Shrine. Link to the Past, Tower of Hera, that's really cool. But yeah, let's get started. And with that, um, we're gonna go uh, lowest to highest here. So I have Hyrule Warriors as the lowest. Yes, I am including Hyrule Warriors. Um, to me, the bottom three on my list are kind of interchangeable. Uh, you know, it's- it's, uh, this isn't like a real Zelda game to me, I would say. Let me just make sure I got all my controls down. I don't have shields yet, so it's just this and the map. Uh, yeah, it's not my style of play. It's kind of, uh, it's like Zelda fan fiction. It's kind of fun to play with a friend. I do like the adventure map that's modeled after the original Legend of Zelda. Uh, second to last on my list is Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. I gave the slight edge to this one just I don't know, because I I like that it, you know, it's not like a, a canon story or anything. I'm gonna die. <laughs> um, it, but it does kind of add to the characterization of some of the characters from Breath of the Wild. Which I thought was kind of neat. Uh... It is kind of interchangeable though. This one's also basically fan fiction to me. And you know, despite the, the fact that I enjoy the characterization a little bit, I almost think I like the Hyrule Warriors story better just because it's definitely fan fiction and I like that it gets a little more tangible. Um, oh my god, I'm gonna die in like two seconds. I'm not even sure what these guys are supposed to be. Are these supposed to be keys? I would love to have a shield right now. Okay, third to last, I have four swords. Um, it's fun to play with friends. I learned this year that you can throw pots on... Um, ow. I, and I died. You can throw pots, um, pick up pots and throw them on other people's heads and they will have a pot stuck on their head and will not be able to see. It's kind of funny. Uh, yeah, that's that. Uh, next up is Triforce Heroes, which I think is actually a really fun game to play multiplayer. It definitely suffers single player. Uh, that's about all I have to say. The uh, it's got some good music. Um, 
You know what? I actually uh, skipped something. Did I really put that that low? You know, I I don't think I meant to put Adventure of Link below Four Swords, so. But that's what it. Oh god, do I have to like re-rank these on the spot now? You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna put for Adventure of Link uh, between Four Swords and Triforce Heroes. Uh, not really my th well. I think it's cool in some ways. But it's it's not as um, puzzle heavy as some of the other Zelda games, which is what I really like in a Zelda game. You know, Jesus. Oh yeah, I have a shield now. I forgot. There is somebody making uh, an indie adventure of Link like, which I'm kind of excited about. It's called Sheep Lad. It looks pretty cool. It, it might be a, a game I actually enjoy. Maybe it'll increase my appreciation for Adventure of Link. Or maybe not. I don't know. I appreciate Adventure of Link, but I, I don't really love playing it. Ooh. Next up is Four Swords Adventures. Uh, it's a solid multiplayer Zelda. I think it's fun single player too. It, it can get a little bit awkward to control, uh, but it definitely it's got some good uh, strategizing. I think that even uh, shoot. How do I? Can I move this? Do I gotta press a button? Oh no, B. There we go. Also, I, I really like the uh, Four Swords Adventures art style. Okay, next up is The Legend of Zelda. I think it's it's gone higher. It's still pretty low on my list. Once again, it's a pretty enemy heavy game as you can see here. What is going on in this room? Uh, And yeah, I just, I like my Zelda games to be more on the puzzle heavy side. I'm not super into like clear the enemy rooms, which even some of the early 3D Zelda games have. Next up is Spirit Tracks. I actually, wait, what room? I, I'm in this room. I can go up. Oh, I forgot I have bombs. I actually love is that not the room I'm in? Am I just confused? Oh, no, that's just saying that I have a key. Where am I on this map? Why can't I see where I am on this map? Wait, am I on this the top room? I'm on the top room, aren't I? Oh, God. Yeah, because I've been there. Oh, my God. I'm just being dumb. A dumb dumb right now. Anyway, I love the 3DS, not the 3DS, the DS Zelda games. Uh, I think they they use the touch controls. Uh, whoops. Maybe not always super well, but I like how they innovate with the 3DS. I like how they they kind of fully utilize the system. Sometimes in really fun ways and sometimes in really frustrating ways. You know, I, I like a- oh, I'm in the room that's in the center of the screen, aren't I? Uh, yeah, sometimes in a way that's really frustrating. I'm almost done this dungeon. I'm never gonna um, finish this ranking in time. Maybe we'll just like, oh jeez, oh jeez. Okay, next up is Phantom Hourglass, which I like a little bit more than Spirit Tracks. I know that's maybe a controversial opinion. Oh my goodness. Oh no. It's always a skip. 
Because they haven't added bosses. M many bosses, I guess. Uh, Phantom Hourglass has got some of my favorite uh, items in the series. I love the uh, hookshot grappling hook thing. I love the bomb shoes. It has some really cool dungeons too. Um, excuse me? Oh, one thing I forgot to say about Spirit Tracks is that it has a, a Zelda that... Um, even though she's kind of attacked at the beginning of the game, she's not rendered useless the way she is in some other games. She's really fun. Uh, she's, based, she's like your companion for this game, basically, and she's really goofy and I love it. I guess I didn't really mean to talk this much about my ranking, but here it is. Uh, what's next? What's next? A Link to the Past is next, which I know is, like, controversially low for a lot of people. I appreciate it. Um, it's done great things for the series. I'm gonna freaking die here. Once again, uh, not super into Defeat the Enemy Rooms, and that A Link to the Past certainly has a lot of them. Ow, I'm gonna die. How do I get out of this without dying? Like that. I probably should die. Okay, whatever. Next up is Twilight Princess, which is also on the lower side for a lot of people, probably. I, I'd say at the time I, that, that I played it, it was my favorite game in the, in the series. And at the time, at that time, I had only played uh, two Zelda games. That's not to say I dislike it. Uh, uh, snow, snow head, snow head, snow, the mansion. Snow? Snow Peak. Why? I mean Head Peak, you know, similar thing going on here. I guess we can go this way for fun. As far as um, 3D Zeldas go, I think it plays it a little bit safe. Um, next up I have Cadence of Hyrule, which is probably controversially high on my list. Why did I get flippers for that one room? Okay, we've, we've done it. I love the music. I love playing it as a multiplayer game. I really struggled with it when I played it at first as single player, but I think once you play it as a multiplayer game, it's a little more forgiving. And we're done. Oh man, what should I do now? I have to do something else. I forgot how short this one was. But yeah, Cadence. Love the music. It can be difficult, but I also think it has some nice like accessibility options. Uh, let's check out the Serpinski Triangle, which if you didn't know, that's basically a Triforce. Fractal dungeon with no obstacles? Sure. Next up is the Minish Cap, a uh, really cute, charming game. Uh, it's almost like nostalgic, even though I didn't play it until I was an adult and had played most of the other games in the series. Is that it? Yeah, there you go. It's just a fun little uh, map. I, I think. The game does some cool puzzly things with its dungeons. I don't know. I'm just like really fond of it. Kind of, kind of a more unique. I don't know. It feels different to me from the other 2D Zeldas. Uh, next up is Oracle of Seasons. I love the Oracle games. I think they're uh, some of the most challenging games in the series and they have a lot of really cool puzzles and bosses. I love the length story concept. This one is just a little bit lower than me than um, 
the other one. The next up is Link's Awakening. Maybe my first 2D Zelda? Really awesome game. I love the original and I love the 2019 version. I feel like it doesn't get enough credit for establishing a lot of the things that uh, you see in, in Zelda now. It's it's uh, super charming, I like Minish Cap. What should I do while I'm... Oh, can I go back into uh... Dang, Forest Temple? Let's do that. Pac-Man? Do we not enter? Is this the same one? Is this also the Manji? No, I don't want to download it. Oh, whatever. We're checking out this other version of the manji while I finish this uh, ranking. Are these coconuts in here? What's up next? Oracle of Ages is up next. Kind of already talked about this, but I, it's got really awesome puzzles, really challenging uh, dungeons and bosses. This one definitely has a little bit of an edge over Oracle of Seasons. I think it's really awesome that they're on NSO now, so people have new opportunity. God, ugh. Really need my shield, guys. Ow, these guys are gonna kill me! Wow, I did it. I can't believe I did it. Next up is Wind Waker. Oh god. I want to say this was like the f I don't know if it was the fourth actually. I got this with the Wii U. That was the first version of Wind Waker. Well, and the only version of Wind Waker that I have played. Sort of a prototype for the open world, for the 3D open world games, I should say. You know, we, I feel like we've had some, we definitely had some. 2D open world, especially just with the OG. Love how colorful and fun and goofy it can be. I love how expressive Link is while also having sort of a more complex take on Ganondorf. Not my favorite dungeons though. Next up is A Link Between Worlds. Uh, I love this game. Oh my god, this is killing- this is much harder than the other one. I think the gimmick is really fun. Uh, every every dungeon in the game is awesome. Can I go somewhere else first and maybe get- wait, I have a shield. Did I start with the shield? I'm gonna die again. Yep. It's a it's a great follow-up to a link to the past, I think, and it's really accessible for like a first-time Zelda player, in my opinion. Uh next up is Majora's Mask. I think this and the next one are really, really close uh on my personal ranking. It's honestly, it, it was hard to decide which one to put on top. I love them both for different reasons. This one, I, I love a, a Zelda that's chock full of side quests. I think the story is great. Uh, I think even though the time limit uh, gives me a lot of anxiety while I'm playing, I, I think that's an important part of the game. So maybe I, I, it's not really a Zelda game I can sit back and relax and enjoy. I love the story. I love the darker tone of the game. What is happening here? Confused. Oh, we're at the beginning of the dungeon. That's what's happening. The mask gimmick is so cool. It's so cool that you get to play as, you know, Deku Scrub, Boron, Zora. 
should have gotten to play as a Gerudo. Just, uh, oh no, I cannot skip these guys. Anyway, as I've already mentioned, Ocarina of Time is next. That was my first Zelda game. It's such a good classic game. It, it works so well even today. I, I don't really feel like any of the Zelda games have uh, aged poorly, but you know, I, I think if you uh, just updated the graphics, you could release this as a modern game and you wouldn't know the difference. Next up is Skyward Sword, which was my favorite Zelda game for a while. I love the art style, I love the music. It's got a lot of my favorite dungeons in the series. Uh, like, uh, Ancient Cistern, Sand Ship. I love a lot of the stuff you do, the puzzly stuff you do outside of the dungeons. I love the silent realms. I know. I'm not, I'm a freak for that. Come here, buddy. I'm on one heart. Oh, I'm on half a heart. I am totally gonna die before this gets done. Uh, and you know what the next two are. Alrighty, so the runner-up, which was my favorite Zelda game until just this year, is Breath of the Wild. I feel like I have such an emotional uh, connection to this game. I, I remember when it came out, it just like gave me this feeling that I had when I was younger and first playing Ocarina of Time. I just wanted to keep exploring Kokiri Forest and I wanted more of that. I just spent so much time just running around there and that was like Breath of the Wild gave me this is the whole game. I love exploring it. I think it's so beautiful. Uh, as someone who's not super into combat in Zelda, I think this made it uh, much more accessible to me. Yeah, just, just a really beautiful game in general. And number one, Tears of the Kingdom. Gives me a lot of what I love about Breath of the Wild. Adds more to explore, changes the world. I know a lot of people just don't like they went that they went back to the same Hyrule, but part of the enjoyment I got out of the game was just I, I arrived and I was like, "Ooh, what's changed here? Who's here now? What's going on?" The story was so much more integral to the game. There were a lot more side quests going on that just like really rewarding side quests. Obviously, there's the whole gimmick of, you know, creating stuff. Ultra Hand and fusing. And while I think those things are really awesome, they're pro they're not what set Tears of the Kingdom above Breath of the Wild for me. Although, Tears of the Kingdom definitely gives me a greater appreciation for things in Breath of the Wild. Like, kind of this sense of isolation and loneliness. I'm currently working on a project where I compare Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. That will start coming out in the new year. It's going to be split into parts because it's going to be sort of more of a deep dive. I want to start out with the Great Plateau and Great Sky Island and, and compare those. I'm really excited to do that. I'll try to be back soon with the level 4 uh, replica if I can find it. Maybe it's in here by name? Uh, shoot. What is level four? Lizard, right? Or no, the snake. That's what it is. Let's see if the snake is in here. Snake shrine? The snake. Okay. One of these should be the snake. Snakes remains. A little oracle of seasons in here. That's pretty cool. But yeah, I'll see you with some more Zelda content in the new year. Happy holidays. Thanks for watching.